think it's that one. Yeah. Okay. Hello, uh, members. Thank you for joining South Africa CTV again this Friday, or this coming Friday, rather. Um, I'm here today with Dr. Claire Bates from Supported Living and Sean Davis from Men's Health Cymru. So, hello both. Thank you for joining this, this interview. I know the members will really appreciate your input on relationships and online dating in particular, as they've requested this theme. Claire, um, may I come to you first? Um, could you tell me a little bit about yourself and who Supported Levin is and the type of work they do? Okay, so yeah, so I'm, I'm Claire Bates and I work for a charity that works for, with people with learning disabilities and autistic people. And I set up Supported Levin. So we're um, a national network, so anyone can join. So we have um, people like who work for charities like mine. We have dating agencies. We have members of advocacy groups, so self advocates, um, nurses, doctors, psychologists, the social workers. We have a group, we have quite a lot of people um, in in our in supported loving about a thousand people across the UK. So we have supported loving Cymru, which just is in Wales. So that's for people who live in Wales to. And we, that's a new that's quite new um and then we have um the the the, the, the original supported loving which is mainly in england um yeah so we try and help people around um giving good support around relationships um and we we share good work that people are doing and we, we try and help people to give better support around this that's fab that's fab thank you claire you have a big membership that's fairly impressive fair play. that's amazing that's Taking four years <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Sean, um, hello. Um, thanks for joining as well. Could you um give us a little brief about the work you do, Sean, and type of work that you kind of do for uh men camp camera and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Good morning, Kira. Um, So, um, yeah, I, I'm Sean. I work for Men Cap Cymru and have done for 13 years now. Um, so my current role uh, means I have responsibility for the projects that we develop in Wales um, at Men Cap. Um, and I guess one of my priority areas is around supporting friendships and relationships. So uh, one project that members may be familiar with is the Our Social Networks project, where we've recorded people's stories around friendships and relationships. And we wanted to do that just to kind of understand what was the experience and then take the learning from that to start conversations with people, including the people and make decisions about people's lives, I guess. Um, and I also chair the LGBT group um, in Wales, uh, which was established in recognition that for people with a learning disability who identify as LGBT, um, there wasn't necessarily representation and people may be struggling. So um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that covers it. Thank you both. Um, Okay, first question then, um, I suppose, is um, online dating safe? Um, let's go to you first, Claire, if um, that's, that's okay. So do you think online dating is safe or what's your um, expertise around this area? Um, well, somebody who's been married for about 15 years, I haven't used it, um, but, <laughs> but per oh. so, so, so personally, personally I, um, I can only go on what my friends say. Uh, but, but so I didn't say before, I also am a researcher. So I work at a university called the University of Kent. Um, and I've done quite, I've been part of research teams that have looked at online dating for people with learning disabilities. And, and, and what we, what they found in the research is it, it can be, it, it can be safe, but it also can, cannot be safe. So it depends on how people are sort of, are going about it so if they're if you know it, it, it sometimes people you know really want to find a relationship and they, they use online dating and it's about you know it can be unsafe if you start giving up personal information like really you know really quickly you know we, we, we always try you know we found that people were giving out their phone number where they live um and they you know they they you know they, they maybe weren't keeping themselves safe online so 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 we know that a lot of organizations that we work with are doing are trying to help people to keep safer with online dating because you know there are a lot of people out there who sadly you know aren't aren't that nice and they will take advantage of people so it's about giving people the skills to know you know to make sure that they you know don't give out personal information too soon that maybe they share anything they're worried about with people their supporters or their family if something 
you know, and and and, and understanding of meet that like if they are going to meet someone from online dating to meet them in a in a public place and sort of trying to help people to understand because it's quite new online online dating for a lot of people. It's quite a new thing for for everybody really. Um, and 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 I think I think it is safe, um, but but it, as long as people sort of you know try and understand how to make keep themselves safer. Do you see what I mean by 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 understanding how to sort of keep themselves more safe online? But I do think that there are sadly people out there that that will look for people to 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 target to to to, to try and you know we've had we've known of people that have um, had abuse online because of because maybe they look a little bit different to the other people on the dating site and people have been rude and nasty to them, which is horrible, but it does happen. Or we've known people to try and get money from people, thinking maybe they could, you know, asking people for money um, on, on, on sort of like, you know, and we always try to give people advice on not, you know, on not giving anything to, to anyone and, keep, and keeping their personal stuff, you know, information and their, their stuff safe until they're sure that, 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 that they are a good person, they're someone they might want a relationship with. But I think as long as people have some support, it, it can be, it can be safe. But I think from talking to my friends, it can also be a bit soul destroying because I think you've got to kiss a lot of frogs before you get your prints. I think there's a lot of um, I think people get disappointed. I think they go on there and they see all these people and they're like, oh, I can go out with all these people. And actually, a lot of the time, they, they don't get many matches. Because of it. And I think that's the same with you've got to learn to do or not. I think it's just a bit of a brutal, it can be a bit, you know, it can be a bit of a brutal world for someone online dating. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Claire, for yeah. your input with that. Um, yeah, as some aspects of um, well, anything you do, you, you take a risk. You know, there's always going to be that kind of like you know, you may get the odd like you know, I, I say people asking you for many, would you go up with me if if, I, if um, I give you many or um, and like a lot of people are quite naive to give a person information. Um, and I found that out. Um, Sean, what's your opinion on on my dating? Do you think it's safe or? So Similarly to Claire, I've never actually used online dating. I'm just like that generation that, that missed it, I think. And I'm probably a bit relieved because I personally find it a bit intimidating. Mm. Um, yeah, that whole kind of judging. And I think a lot of it feels like it's a, it's appearance-based, so it's at a very superficial level, if that makes sense. Um, but again, that's coming from a very um, ignorant um, position because I've not used it. Um, having said that, I have colleagues, I've met people online um, without a learning disability who have subsequently married. Um, and also through the Our Social Networks uh, project, we have stories who um, of people who have met um, their partners online. So certainly there are opportunities there, but I just, I agree with Claire, it's about the support maybe that you need to put in place to keep you safe. And I think honestly, that's true of anyone whether you have a learning disability or not that you're just kind of checking in perhaps with your friends or family or just people that you trust and you're not doing it as an isolated activity um that would be my concern um and that's that's where i feel that anybody becomes more vulnerable where it's it's much more of an isolated activity and you may not be sharing the contact that you're having with other people around you so um uh, yeah i think yeah just to kind of reiterate claire's point i think there is you know, you, you have, people have to be cautious, but there are maybe things that you can put in place to help keep yourself safer. And then the other option is, you know, there are groups that are specifically for people with a learning disability in terms of kind of online interaction. So I know in North Wales, you've got the Love to Meet You kind of project, which, you know, isn't exclusively dating, but that does come into it. And I, I, I just think there, there may be some other options that may feel safer and, um, you know, because lots of the, one of the things that came back from the Our Social Networks project was the lots of people, particularly if they went to a mainstream school, just didn't feel safe in that environment. Um, and it was only when they came into a much more kind of closed learning disability environment that they felt like they had any freedom to be themselves. And I think there's maybe some lessons there in terms of how we conduct dating and stuff as well. So yeah, that those are my just thoughts on it, but coming from a very inexperienced <laughs> position. Okay. To, to be honest, because with online dating, um, I know people that haven't really been on online dating much, but before COVID, um, I knew people that had done speed dating, and some people found that quite um, useful. Um, okay, so thank you both. 
Um, Sean, let's go to you for this one, then we could go to Claire. In your opinion, do you think online dating is accessible to a person who has a learning disability? Um, again, the caveat is that I've not used it, so my knowledge is limited, but I don't see why it shouldn't be or couldn't be. And again, I suppose it's about having that kind of support um, around you. There's nothing in terms of the concept that I think would, you know, that is, is would be too difficult for an individual to engage with, with the right support. Um, but the other question, which isn't really about accessibility, it's about what's the best way of getting to know somebody mm. and is online dating the best way of doing that or are there other opportunities and I, I suppose coming back to my point about love to meet you or other groups that you know even people first that may be doing things online where you're kind of meeting with people and you may want to um you may want to then develop that and then just from my personal experience often my relationships I'm married now but often my relationships have come from friendships as well they've been mm. friendships and they've evolved and I think it's helpful sometimes not to lose sight of that as an option, you know, just getting to know people in, in the structures that we have. Um, yeah, but the problem is, I think, or something that should be addressed is increasing those opportunities for people with a learning disability, because I do accept that sometimes they can be limited or you may feel frustrated that it's the same people that you're coming into contact with. Mm. Thank you, um, Sean. Claire, what's your thoughts on... Um on do you think online dating is accessible to a person who has a learning disability? So we we I think I think yes, absolutely it can be. And I think certainly some of the newer apps, I say new, God, they're not new, like Tinder, where it's very much you swipe in. You don't have to type once someone's helped you set up your profile. So obviously I think that's a bit of a so, so we, we found that we found through COVID. That lots of people with a learning disability use on can get online really easily and that's been great mm -hmm. but we found that a lot of people really struggle to either get online or to or have in sort of the technology um so so that that can be difficult so and i suppose the skills in terms of, sort of setting up your profile and understanding how it how it works um but once if someone for a lot of people if they've had help to set up their profile things like tinder you just swipe I can't remember if it's swipe right swipe left you know like you just you just you just swipe on your phone so there's not a lot of um you know there's, there's less sort of piping piping involved um so I think in some ways yes that is it I know I certainly see a lot more people with learned disabilities now have a smartphone um I, I never used to see that ever whereas the last when I last actually went to a live human event I remember I remember having to tell the people in the group with learning disabilities to put their phones away and normally I only have to tell that to the staff um <laughs> not, not, don't normally have to tell the people in the on the training course um themselves so the more people have phones I think people are getting more used to it um but I do think there's a barrier there in terms of how um how accessible it is for some people because if they get messages you know they need help to type them back um but I think yeah I think it, I think it can I think it is I think it can be accessible but as Sean was saying we have like there, there, there are other ways for people to meet people that, that maybe are more that are maybe more comfortable so if you're like the group that love to meet you like there's a lot of groups that that um that are set up and certainly in England we've got we've got quite a few we've also got some that are just for people who maybe just don't doesn't have to be if you have a learning disability but it's if you have any sort of social need so often they've, they've got some people that maybe some some autistic people join or people that have had like sort of mental health issues maybe like social anxiety where just just general people just generally people who would feel more comfortable in a supported environment which has been nice because people meet people outside of maybe who they went to school with and that in those groups um but yeah i mean i definitely think it, it can be accessible for people but uh, the other thing as well is i think people have never really had any support on how to use these things you know we've all just grown up like learning how you know my mates have just learn how to use it and i think for a lot of people we do really need to give people help but it'll be more accessible if we actually people get support on actually how to use it um and how to know like how how it works um there was a company called my favorite hello um i think they still exist um, and they were set up by a sister um, for her brother who was autistic and he wanted to meet somebody and she set up this My Favourite Hello, which is the only online dating platform I know that's specifically aimed at autistic people, but also for 
they do have people of the learned disability as well um, uh, can use it. And it has um, a really clever function where you can have a shared account. So if I was using it and I wanted my um, sister to, to have my to have access to my account, so she would get the messages that I was getting. So she could have a look. She, I could she could check for me that, she, that you know if I'm not sure that it's okay um, the messages I'm getting, she can see what I'm getting if, if I if I gave her permission. So that like that was a really good model, but I don't know how I don't know what the update was of it. It didn't. People were a little bit worried about it, and it hadn't. It didn't really take off as well as I thought. I don't think, but um, it still exists and it's still available. Um, but that was an interesting um, model, I thought, for how for people to you know have a look. But yeah, okay. sorry, I'm going to keep a bit there. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. Thanks, Claire. Um, thank you for your opinion on that. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's an online dating app called Grinder. I don't know if you've heard of this. Now, it's yeah, basically yeah. the gay version of um, Tinder because, now I don't know if this is right or not, but I'm, I'm sure I read somewhere that a lot of people in the LGBT community, like um, and especially gay, gay people, um, found time Tinder didn't quite suit um, like the needs of um, a man looking for a man then. So, mm-hmm. that, so that's why they set up Grindr, which is a whole purpose. And um, Grinder has been has been known not to be as safe as Tinder, um, because I've been on on Grinder in the past and on the app, um, again not to, to show you, um, you, you know your personal information which we've talked about, but also with the app it shows you how far you are to someone you're meeting. Yeah, so there the is location. Yeah, so there is our safety aspect of it. Yeah. And, and I find that pretty, I, I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of Grindr, and they did actually launch one for, for for straight people as well called Blender, which was right. the same company. I don't know if it still exists. I know somebody met someone in it. <laughs> um, but again, yeah, it is location based. It actually pinpoints to where you are, doesn't it? Um, mm. Which, yeah, I, I, I do worry about, I, I would worry about that a little bit more. Yeah, um, yeah just because it does show where you actually are. Um, but which, which yeah, I, I do think that is a little bit worrying. Um, but I think it's about again about sort of educating people to, to you know to keep themselves to keep themselves safe and and to you know just because it knows what street you're on as well. I, I, yeah, I, I do worry. I just sound a bit old. You know, <laughs> just like you know, as I said, child, I'm kind of I missed all this. So um, yeah. I mean, it's quite scary for me it's quite like oh wow that person knows now where you are but mm. also Gary just another point on that is um understanding what your intention is and mm. what other people's intention are and and the reason I say that is because if your intention is about a relationship that's and that's fine um what you don't necessarily know or understand is whether the the people that you're engaging with it, whether their intention is a relationship or actually just sex and you know yeah. the, and that's fine um but just that there's transparency around that. And I just think there's a, a need to kind of manage expectations around that as well. Does that make yeah. sense? Yes. Yeah. As long as you become... Sorry, go on. Sorry, because that, that's, that's the thing. A lot of these apps, like Tinder and Grindr, are like hookup apps. So they're, they're apps that people will use sometimes for a relationship. But a lot of the time it's because it's, it's 11 o'clock and they're at night and they're horny. And <laughs> there's somebody around the corner <laughs> that is also funny <laughs> um, that looks all right. Um, so I think I think yeah, understanding sort of um, it, they're not a slow process of getting to know somebody and getting to trust somebody. It's much more like you look nice, come over. Because when I used to go on going that there was and I give you a bio like you know ask it says like you know your age, name, and what you're looking for and different things. Well, most people I came across were, were saying no strings attached, right? I'm thinking, yeah. what the hell is this? Way? And it basically means that they're just looking for sex. So that, that's what it, what it means. But if someone with a disability was using Grindr, for example, they had terms that they wouldn't necessarily know. No. If it was said, oh, I am just looking for sex, then that then they would probably understand that. But if it says, like, no strings attached, others, or um, top, bottom, whatever, then they wouldn't really understand those terms. Yeah. You know, so there's an aspect of it. Okay, thank you both. Is there any other bitch you want to add on that? Not from me. Okay. Claire? No, I no. I lost it, but I think about saying about this one. That's okay. It, it is a big discussion um around um online dating and the um the accessibility of it and the safety aspect of that. Do you know if new relationships have formed during lockdown? I don't know who wants to go first with this one. 
Go on, Claire. <laughs> oh, I, don't but, I mean, I can just, I, I don't know. Um, is it, I, I know that uh, we've done some work, we did some interviews right at the first lockdown in supported loving um, with some people. It wasn't that new relationships started, but some relationships got a lot ser- got a lot more serious. So we knew of quite a lot. Of, I knew at least five couples where one of them, they were in a casual relationship, and then when they heard lockdown was coming, they moved in with their partner really quickly um, right. because they didn't want to be apart during lockdown. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think some of them worked out, some of them didn't. Um, I think I'm aware that there's been quite a few sort of new relationships forming. So uh, the, the Pride group that we was at, um, yeah, right, that that. So I I volunteer at one of those with my mate Tom, who was there, Rainbow Friends in London, and we've actually been joining with Lancashire. Um, group so it's great because we've been ha- so they've been able to meet other LGBT plus people with a learning disability all over the country well in Lancashire particularly and also in Leeds um, which we would never so they've made friendships uh, they haven't made any relationships but they've certainly made friendships in online um, that we wouldn't have done without um, but yes yeah, so I, I think I think some of the online groups that we've sort of been running where people have been able to talk more has, has made some friendships certainly 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 I have um and have some of my members have too which has been really nice we can't wait to meet in person now to a pride event together okay thank you Claire Sean um what are your opinions on do you think new relationships are formed during lockdown or new yeah so actually I, I don't know the answer to that but what I would say is certainly from people that I know that idea of friendships being extended has definitely happened because the the point that Claire was making the kind of geographical limitations that have been imposed previously so you can't travel they've just become irrelevant so you know that there's an lgbt group up in north wales as part of love to meet you well an individual from swansea can engage with that now because there is an issue in terms of travel so i think there are definitely more opportunities and that seems to me to be a direct consequence of the situation that we're in but on the flip side i think that um there are other stories that I'm aware of that there have been real strains on relationships like long-standing relationships um because the usual structures where people would maybe have access to each other because they're not living together have disappeared and perhaps then if people are living with families because of um shielding or just protection generally um there's just been many more barriers so we know of experiences where people may not have seen each other for three months um yeah which I think has been, yeah, yeah, quite difficult and kind of but shone a real light in terms of people's ability to make choices and just how complicated all of that is. But yeah, in terms of actual relationships, I don't know of any personally. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sean, I, I was being a bit too, I was being a bit too positive there as well. I think, yeah, we've actually, yeah, we've seen, we've seen a lot of um, relationship struggle um, in terms of friendships and relationships where people hadn't I mean we've shared a blog this this bump on Twitter loving where somebody hasn't seen their partner since oh my god I can't remember when it since the the I don't know since December or something and they'd started doing FaceTime for them but they've only just started doing it. Um so yeah and I just think I don't know anyone who hasn't who didn't have a lender who hasn't seen their partner during lockdown. Most people I know have seen a partner because you can see people in established relationships. So mm. yeah. I think there's been some issues around that. Yeah. And it's and especially lockdown. And... Been... Sorry, Sean, go on. No, sorry, Gerings, I interrupted. Go no, on. no, go on. Um, go for it, please. Um, no, I was just saying that I think that's been the real story for me in terms of, you know, where people may have relationships and then, yeah, the decisions that other people perhaps are making, people without a learning disability, they're not having the privilege to make those decisions. Mm. And um you know, it's coming from a place of love and care, you know, parents or even support staff or needing to protect. But, you know, if that was me, I would be making that decision and I would be making the decision to see my partner because that would be really important to me. And I just think, um, yeah, it's been a really difficult, difficult time in that sense. Yeah, because yeah. they've never actually restricted couples in long term relationships seeing each other. Oh, I think in the very first lockdown they did, but then they said you could bubble and now they've said they don't they're not stopping long-term partners from seeing each other mm. because they don't live together no and even if they are in a bubble they can meet outdoors 
I expect they're still missing that close contact, you know, like, like the cut chain, the kiss in and all that kind of things. And yeah. especially in the lockdown leading up to these restrictions, it's been a long time since they've last even seen their partner in person, let alone social distance from the partner, you know, and it must be really tough, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's also that point that Claire was making. Well, OK, so that's not great to say I wouldn't be particularly happy if I couldn't physically mm. have contact with my partner. But then whether family or staff are then facilitating that online contact, because often people will require that support and that may not be happening for lots of complicated reasons. So, um, yeah, I wonder whether people feel quite powerless in in this situation mm. to, to kind of change things. Yeah. we've seen real benefits when people could see each other because so the, this couple i was talking about they were phoning each other all the time but they hadn't seen each other because they didn't know how to use facetime and once yeah. they showed them how to use facetime they can use it now themselves but they didn't have like tablets or they didn't have they had to wait for the staff to do it on the phone you know because they didn't have their own smartphone they didn't have their own tablet to look on so it's really sort of highlighted like lack of technology for some people mm. Okay, yeah, thanks for your input. And um, yeah, like like you said, not not many people are technically um, minded. You know, they wouldn't really know how to access FaceTime and add their own mobile phones and tablets and stuff. But I think since the pandemic, I think more people now have come kind of come into the online FaceTiming, chatting, WhatsApping world. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. And people are really chuffed that they can do that as well. Yeah. And I think in different circumstances, we would never put that expectation on people, which I think is interesting for us yes. you know, as a sector and stuff. Um, but that's happened. And I, I think people feel really proud, as they should be, that they, you know, they've, they've mastered it. And yeah, got a bit of, for those people who are using those kind of technologies, kind of regained a bit of control from it. So yeah, yeah. It's, it is a positive thing here. Okay, thank you both. Final question. Now, I know you haven't got any experience of online dating, so this can just basically be from your own opinion or your own advice or whatever. Um, you haven't got to base it on fact. Um, is there any advice both of you can, can give or can give to a person who has a learning disability and is either looking for a new relationship or is just starting online dating? Oh, okay. I go first. Uh, okay. So, so like, do you want to go first? Sorry, I just, do you want to go first or should I go for it? I'll tell you what, I'll do one bit and you can do a bit of advice. Okay. When it comes to online dating, I'd say make sure that you, like, don't get too excited. I don't want to say lower your expectations, but, you know, often people see it online. They see all these people. It's like looking at an Argos catalogue full of potential partners. And, and, and ultimately, I think people need to be sort of set up to think, you might be disappointed because I know a lot of people when they start they think they're going to meet someone straight away um, and I think you know be, be prepared that it might not happen straight away um, get some support around using the technology also get your staff to understand because many of the staff don't know how to use Grindr or how to use you know Match or Plenty of Fish or any of the other dating sites so help get that you know both of you together if you've got support if you want support to learn how this works help get some guidance there's a good book that I claimed called staying safe online that talks about how to keep yourself safe online and uh, some good tips in there um, so I'd recommend that um, you can get it online for free um, and and I would suggest you know learning some of the rules about keeping yourself safe um, if you are going to use um, an online dating platform I'd have a look at my favorite hello because it is made for people with learned disabilities and autistic people and it it, it, I don't know how many people use it, but it could be a good, a good, good one to start with. Um, I would suggest. I mean, do you have anything more tied on online dating, Sean? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, so, so that would be. Don't be put off. Just keep can be horrible um but hopefully they won't be um but i think people are just generally more mean online than they would be in real life um everybody um so just just be prepared um and i would say personally i would look to see if there's um any dating agencies in your area like love to meet you um or um or failing that new social group because i met online or offline um this, when covid's over you know more online you know more discos social groups you know 
somewhere that you've not been before if you if only if you've got a really hobby that you love there's someone else like an art you like art is there an art group near you you might meet somebody um who share you know i've met partners through things that i we shared an interest you know so, so finding someone you know meeting more people um trying to trying to, trying to sort of do it i personally I, i'd probably go that way rather than online dating but um as i said like, i don't I've never used it. Maybe I'd love it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that would be my advice. Okay. Thank you. And Thank then you I, I haven't. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I I think maybe the starting point is for you know with somebody you trust, whether it's family, staff member, friend, really understand what your motivation is. Like, is it is it about having sex? And that's a really important thing. And I think, you know, we can talk about that and there should be space for that. Or is it, are you looking for a long-term relationship? And that's really what you, because I think once you've identified maybe what the, what it is you really want, um, you may want to, you know, you, you may pursue different avenues because, you know, as kind of we've already discussed, some of these online, I sound so old, I, I sound ridiculous. I'm really sorry to your members, but some of these um, online sites, they are more geared around um, sex and that's fine, isn't it? That's fine yeah. as long as it's two consenting adults and that everyone has an understanding that that's the expectation. Mm. Um, and that, you, you know, that you can be safe around that. You know, I think there's always complications around that, but you know, um, I think yeah that that's the the starting point is what I because if you're looking for a long term relationship, I think it probably is much harder. I don't have an evidence base for this, but I think it's probably much harder you, to to get that through an online dating mm. app with so many people maybe on there for different motivations. But I think people need to understand what their motivation is, you know, and that's. I think that should really be a conversation again with somebody, yeah, you trust or, you know, may not want it to be a family member, but a, re a friend or a staff member or whoever. Um, and then, and then once you've kind of, I guess, had those conversations, then if, if it is online, yeah, to just keep, make sure that you're not doing it alone. So you're continuing to have those conversations with staff. So, you know, and picking up on the points that we were making earlier in terms of increased vulnerability and yes. being exploited and things that you, you you can't be doing that I, I think for anyone actually it shouldn't be done alone and I, certainly so a friend of mine who came out of a long-term relationship so is my age so hadn't really engaged with online dating before and then she was like oh right I'm gonna try this and certainly when she was meeting up with people like in public spaces she was telling me the time that she was meeting up with them you know when she was due like if she called me or to call her you know so you've got these kind of things in place yeah um, yeah to to yeah to help you like put in protection so I definitely think it's not something you should be pursuing alone and then just picking up on Claire's point like again I think actually you know a digital platform is just a tool and the real thing is connecting with people and actually if you were going to ask me how would you best connect with people it's in person probably and through things that you enjoy um and having like shared experiences and stuff so definitely explore the groups like i love to meet you or if they don't exist what can be done to create them locally? I suppose that's the challenge, Garen, for you in terms of self-advocacy. What can be done to create those kind of social spaces locally, particularly as we come out of this pandemic, hopefully, um, so people can, can meet? But I do understand that lots of people feel frustrated that they're always operating in the same social circle, you know, that yeah. and it, it's quite limited. And I do understand the frustration of that. Um, although I guess picking up on something that was said earlier, there's nothing stopping people from South Wales joining an LGBT group in North Wales or in Manchester, certainly no. for those connections and mm. you know, meeting people and conversations. And again, I, I think those kind of groups probably are safer, but also may allow for more connection than, a, than an app. But again, you know, I, I have yeah, mm. limited experience. In that. Picking up on that, Sean, so, so I'm aware, Garrett, we talked about Grindr, and, and, and I know that it's weird, so I did a project looking at the experiences of bisexual people um, with a learned to speak and, and autistic people, and they really struggled to meet people who they felt comfortable with um, in their 
uh, and then we set up, so I set up with Don, or Don if I help him, our group, because we just wanted something locally, like in London, for people to come and meet other people like them, and we've not had any relationships, we had one kind of semi-relationship, but we, you know, it was just getting people, you know, freedom of confidence to go out in the, and we went to Soho, we go out to pubs, and we've been to like Vauxhall Tavern, which is like a massive, like a really famous sort of gay venue in London at night, you know, just helping people to feel more confident, so I would suggest if, you know, people like should, if there's nothing in your area, like ours cost nothing. You just need some volunteers that are willing to come out for a few beers every now and again. Um, we just, we just set ours up just for, you know, just for, just for we do it every month, you know, normally just for a laugh. And because and, there was nothing available in the area for people that we knew. So I think, you know, you don't have to have like loads of funding and stuff to do this. You just need a couple of people that are willing to like push it forward and do some volunteering around it. Yeah. I think that's a really good approach and something, Garrett, maybe you would want to consider in terms mm. of, you know, all Wales people first. And I know before the pandemic, we were looking at this in terms of the LGBT group and we were trying to link with the LGBT choir in Swansea, who also had like kind of social activities as well. Um, and they were really keen at the time that we could kind of go along. Um, but I definitely think, yeah, just exploring what can be done. And yeah, sometimes we get bogged down with, oh, we need funding and we need all of this. But actually, things can just happen, as Claire says, with a few people um and yeah just making it quite informal and just so people get to occupy spaces you know and get you just yeah just have that experience because sometimes and this is why i was talking about the conversation sometimes people are not even necessarily looking for a relationship immediately no. just want just broader connection and being part yeah. of something bigger um so i yeah i definitely think the things that members you know could you know really think what what it what would it be that would uh, really kind of make a difference you know what would it be like a monthly meetup in a in a pub or in a certain club or an lgbt kind of meetup and to to see who else locally can kind of support that and you'll definitely have people you know the i was all up for going to that choir in in swansea i know and then uh, covid hit then unfortunately claire i just want to come back to your point if i may you were talking earlier about social groups that you know meeting a person can be more um, kind of more relationship effective rather than online. They're in all the people first. We've got a lot of people first groups, and perhaps there could be members in there who are looking for a really, for relationship. And you never know; they could be from their local social group that they haven't met before, you know, or they haven't really talked to people, you know. There's um. Yeah, absolutely. There could be people that they, you know, people join the social groups, and then you know, like a relationship could happen. I think. Yeah, I think absolutely. That's a really good. I think it's a really good place to really good place to start. And then you get to meet people, see what they're actually like in person. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm really anti-internet dating. I just I, we did a big bit of research uh, for a project that I'd done um, a couple of years ago, and uh, we didn't really we spoke to a lot of people with learning disabilities, and we didn't didn't really speak to that many. I don't think I spoke to a single person who had a really who had a relate who had a relationship out of it but I also know a lot of people without a learning disability that have been on online dating for years and not really had a lot of success that had you know as you said Sean I don't think I think we need to be less you know it's not old, it's not old-fashioned to say a lot of the dating sites are for hookups are for sex and I think that's okay but I think people need to be much more aware yeah. that a lot of people use them for that yeah and I just want to come back to you on um, if I may, before we um, wrap it up shortly. Um, you were saying that around people just looking for networks, like, you know, they could be going from South Wales and they could be looking for, like, an LGBT group in North Wales or could be looking for a different group in Manchester. I know friends of mine who've, um, who wasn't initially looking for um, a long-distance relationship, but they actually found that because they don't, they don't see that person off... Um, they see that person regular, but not like every day or every week. And they have found that their relationship is stronger because they're not on each other's backs. So they answer that sometimes long distances can work. And um, definitely. Well, we had a, a person share their story through our social networks who had met online with somebody in America and oh, wow. been together for two years, I think had met once physically. But they were, you know, they were really happy with that. You know, there was a connection that they had. Um, so definitely, you know, things can happen. And both sets of parents were involved, like were aware and supportive. And um, 
yeah so you know yeah you don't want to dismiss it at all and no. I do think that there are there is a real recognition now that distance doesn't need to be the defining thing no. so you could you know just through an LGBT group potentially in Manchester just meet somebody online within that group who you you know you just really like kind of chatting with and you've got space to do that and I think I think that's fine isn't it and it's um it just it's opening it things up for people whereas before we were a bit closed I think in our thinking like you yeah. have to be in a particular area and you know yeah so I, I think in that sense it is there is there are definitely opportunities and I think it's probably for gearing for your members to be exploring like what things within the UK people could be joining in because I think uh -huh. people are really receptive to that certainly the groups in North Wales are like yes if you're in South Wales please join online um but then what locally you would want to be creating in terms of those kind of social groups yeah I, I think I've seen another, another thing I've seen which is an example which is really nice that I knew about was there was a, a young a, a colleague of mine a, a, her, her her grandson who's autistic he he struggles in his, he goes to a mainstream school and he has some friends, but he struggles to make friends in his school. You know, the people he's in a he's in a mainstream school, but he's made he's got a girlfriend that she she they play Minecraft together, they do online gaming and they absolutely love it. And he's like, you know, he's made this, they've never met, but they're super close. They've sent birthday presents and stuff to each other, but they talk they play every day on Minecraft together and they've built this lovely relationship through like their shared interest of Minecraft. And I'm just like you know, online, I've known people like online gaming as well sort of really taken off. I've got, we, we support some people in our LGBT group who, who love online gaming and they've built a whole community around people they love to play games with online. I'm just like, you know, it's a really nice way of sharing an interest and also something social as well. And you don't have to be in the same place. I think it's right. My nan, I've always said, she said, um, she said, Gary, she said, if you can, she said, don't go looking for the person you want to be with. They'll come to you and you'll find them in most unexpected places. And I think in some cases, that's absolutely right. Like, you know, you wouldn't necessarily find a person on online date that might for someone online game in, you know? Yeah. Or for your social group, you know, maybe just having a drink in a pub or something and they, and perhaps one day someone will come on to you, have a little chat, a little gym work here and there. And you build that connection or relationship, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because, Gary, do you like, you like kind of singing and... Well, I can't sing, but I do like singing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fantastic Lady Gaga. <laughs> or drag, or, you know, maybe, and that's the kind of, because that's your passion and what you're interested in, and there'll be other people who share that, and it's almost, yeah, like, it, it makes sense that, you you know, you would meet somebody in that kind of environment as well, mm. you know, that, have, that shares your interest, and, um, yeah, so, yeah, I think sometimes we are a bit, you know, we kind of think online dating is the solution and it's just that yeah depending on what your focus is it's just a tiny part yeah. of the picture it could be at all but it shouldn't be the only, if you're looking for love i don't think it should be the only thing you base base it on i think you should, no. if you're looking for a relationship you could try online dating but i'd also suggest going wider and i think the really consensus of the agreement here is to try and find a friendship and then build that friendship that will then they to then form a relationship it's all based on the on the friendship and the whole trust and that kind of basis um claire and sean thank you so much for, for joining me for this um well i, I say into a little chit chat really be more of a chit chat than interview which has been lovely thank mm -hmm. you both once again and um and i'm sure the members will um really appreciate both of your valuable time with this interview and uh hope you both uh, take an note to speak to you soon in the near future oh. Thank you for having Thank you. us. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. You're very good at the hosting. <laughs>